Well, hello, uh, fourth grade. Welcome back to our project-based learning. This week, we are going to be looking at continuing our animation of the life of a plant as we create a program in Scratch that displays that animation. But this week, we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did last week. We're going to show the animation of growth to adult. We're not going to draw that animation. We're going to use it with an, do it with an image and a mask and some sliding tools. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is Google sunflower growing stages. Now for you, you'll choose your own plant, but I'm going to do sunflowers and I'm going to find some images here. Just taking a look at the different ones. This one looks good. So to save it, um, sometimes the, this method works first. If you right click on it and open the link in a new tab or open the image in a new tab, it, you can get right to the image. But as you can see here, it's not going to work right. I'm going to get to some website, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do instead is right click on it and click on save image as. Now, if that doesn't work, you could also do open image in a new tab and then try to save it. So there's a couple different things you can do. So I'm going to save it as sunflower growth in my folder here. And you can see I've already done this more than once. And then I'm going to go into Scratch. So in Scratch, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the cat. And then move out of the way. I'm going to upload a sprite. There we go. You guys have done that before. Click open. Then I'm going to position the sprite of my sunflowers kind of so the first picture is in the center of the screen. That looks good. Then I'm going to go into costumes and I'm going to erase the parts of the picture I don't want. Now the other thing I'm going to do is use the fill tool and change the fill to a slash. And then when I click on the fill tool, it gives me the ability to delete everything of that color. So I'm going to delete everything that's white. Erase a little bit more here. That looks pretty good. I mean, it's white on white, so we won't see too much. But for you, if you have a different color, you might have to do a little bit more or change the background. That works too. Now I'm going to create a new sprite and this time I'm going to set the color to white and I'm also going to set the outline to white. Both should be white and I'm going to draw a rectangle and my rectangle is going to take up the entire window. And you can see my sunflowers have disappeared. Now I didn't delete them. All that happened was they disappeared. The next thing to do is to erase a section in the middle of my rectangle. So I'm going to use my eraser tool. And when I start erasing it, you'll see that it appears as like this blue outline. But I can start to see the stages in my staging window of my sunflower appear again. There they are. I'll get this piece in the middle. Okay, so now I have my sunflowers visible and it is the rest of them are masked out. That's called a mask. So I'm going to go into the code now. Click on my sunflowers. Click on event and drag in when green flag clicked. And now I'm going to do some motion. And I'm going to first make sure that when I click the green flag, my sunflowers go back to the start. Now scratch nose where my sunflowers are right now. So when I click that in, it, that is the starting point. Now I'm going to put in a repeat loop. For now, I'm going to put in the number 55. We may have to change that. Then we'll put in a little bit of a delay because I want this to happen slowly. I don't want to happen it immediately, but I'm going to put in a delay of, let's say, 0.35 seconds. And that'll get the character to move or the 
the sunflowers to move across the screen. Then I'm going to change the x value, but I'm going to change it by a negative 10 so I can get my sunflowers to move to the left. And when I do that, you'll see the effect that the sunflowers are moving behind that masked out rectangle. And it looks like I have a little bit of an animation here of my sunflowers going through the entire life cycle. Now, if it goes too fast or goes too slow, you can always change this number. And you'll notice that mine kind of disappears and goes off the screen. So I'm going to start messing with this number until I can get it so the last sunflower stops. And it looks like 37 times is what's going to work for that for me. And you can figure it out with math and the number of pixels, but it might be easier if we just do some trial and error in order to figure out exactly where it is. So just keep reducing that repeat number until you get down to seeing the last image. Now I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it day number because I also want to display how many days have gone by. Now for a sunflower, it's 125 days from start to finish. That's the entire life cycle of a sunflower, or at least in one season. So I'm going to set the day number to start at day 15, because really we did the seed animation in the last um, animation. So we're going to start at day 15, which happens to be the germination for a sunflower. Then I'm going to again put in a wait. I'm going to start with three seconds. We may need to adjust that. I'm going to put another repeat loop. And I'm going to repeat it of 22 times because doing the math, that's how many um, days, if I count by fives, will get me to 125. And again, you can do some trial and error. I'm going to count by fives. So I'm going to add in five to each day inside the loop. So it looks like that. And I'll include these code snippets for you inside of the Google. And then we'll put in a delay here so that way it only counts up slowly. And let's see, look, see, I have the day number and now it's going to be counting up. And I'm going to have to see if it's going to get to 125 days when I get to the last sunflower. So let's see. Um, nope, didn't quite make it. So I'm going to mess with these numbers and see if I can find the perfect combination. Maybe changing the speed, reducing that number a little bit. Getting closer. Hey, 0.5 seconds seems to work. That seems to get me where I need to be. Now I can also add in another sprite and instead of having the variable just appear at the top I can have that sprite say the day number all the codes the same except I'm adding in this say day number using the joy command join command and I'm going to hide the day number variable this time and when I do it you don't have to do this part but I thought you might like it now my sprite character says the different day numbers as opposed to just being a box at the top you can do either it's up to you I thought my elf looked like a farmer. So that is the entire walkthrough. Once you've gotten it done in Scratch, you again are going to submit the link and make sure you share it to the Google assignment. And I will post up the information in the FAQ about how to post your Scratch links to Google, just in case you don't remember how to do that. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. See you next time.